Hello everyone. A very good evening to all present. Here I am looking this in Rathod with immense pleasure and gratitude. I would like to extend my warm welcome to all present here for that international webinar on how to cope up with the failure. On behalf of our DG Saksham, so before before proceeding with that webinar, let me take a brief moment for the introduction of my organization, DG Saksham. It's an initiative of Seems Group. a global marketplace for learning and teaching online where students are learning new skills and achieving their goals by motto learning for earning dg saksham has developed content for over 300 courses in multiple languages which range from 4 hours to 6 months in various sectors of it dfsi retail and entrepreneurship for all all age groups from school children youth professionals senior citizens dg saksham has also conducted more than 150 webinars 10 plus fdps and workshops seven international conferences dg saksham impacted more than 15000 and plus lives through various webinars conferences workshops and seminars across the globe so let us talk about today's webinar topic that is how to cope with the failure how we can define a failure it is basically a lack of a success or the inability to meet an expectation the expectation we fail to meet is often our own or one that we have created in our own head so to guide us all through this topic today we are having major mohammad ali shah as our guest speaker major mohammad ali shah is the most short after international tdx speaker who has given the highest number of tdx talks not only in india but in the world he was recently invited to speak at prestigious seeding steam global summit conducted jointly by esteemed cambridge university and london university he has also spoken at two joe stocks and ms talk and various other prestigious events major ali shah is a lifestyle and wellness coach motivational speaker public speaker and storyteller too having conducted numerous training sessions for corporates and children too his assignment for sdfc life whereas in session of motivational talks were conducted pan india across delhi bangalore and calcutta another interesting and prestigious assignment was for parimal reality that of a storyteller so so to make kinds of elders to make aware the indian culture rituals and significance behind the festivals of late he has been conducted continuously working and delivering back to back motivational sessions on dealing with the corona virus situation to millions across the globe which has uplifted many people in their trying times as a motivator and a speaker he specializes in converting one's negative into positive disadvantage into advantage liabilities into assets darkness into lights and weakness into strength so as an initiative to give back to society to educate and empower people major ali recently announced his new venture to conduct online learning sessions at an extremely reasonable and an affordable rate this venture this online ed- communication academy received an overwhelming response and is doing extremely well he is also a defense expert and defense analyst and a debate panelist on many popular indian news channels like aastak republic times now news x z news india had cnbc cwn news 18 etc he has also moderated debate sessions at events organizations by some prestigious organizations like entrepreneurs organizations eo raipur and the think literature festival held at the renaissance goa mumbai and at the various other such occasions he is renowned theater and film personality too with the several international awards in his city and he is a visiting faculty at subhas gai wrestling woods international he has also been the jaipur city coordinator for the ipl matches since the last two sessions of ipl including the women's ipl that started this year he is also an alumni of prestigious im calcutta and has done theater as peers majorly won the voted award of best actor at the prestigious delhi international film festival best actor at the international film festival of prayag apart from social mention by juries and critics for outstanding performance and the best actor at the aligarh film saz international 
Film Festival. He was recently conferred with the honorary doctorate by the prestigious International Internship University in cognition of his contribution towards a motivational speaking, especially during the pandemic. Welcome, sir. We are glad to have you here, sir. Thank you, Lokendra, for the wonderful introduction. And thank you, Vandana ji. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, audience, for being here and listening to not my success story, <laughs> but my failure story. And that became the biggest success story. The failure story became a success story. How did that happen? Today, when I travel across the world in different countries, giving motivational talks, not about my success story, but about my failure story. How did that failure story convert into such a success story that people are willing to pay money, look after tickets, travel accommodation, logistics in, for a person who failed repeatedly? I'm sure you all have heard of Ibrahim, who, well, I will come to that later on, but about Ibrahim Lincoln, who was the 16th president of the United States of America superpower, who failed many times, faced a lot of rejection, a lot of humiliations, a lot of struggles, a lot of hardship, but ultimately became the president of a superpower like the United States of America. Now, let me tell you one thing. I fell in love for the first time in my life, very early. I fell in love when I was only five years old and I had my first heartbreak. Also very early in life, I had my first heartbreak. Michael John Juan, you are looking, peeping through and wondering, okay, let's hear the heartbreak. Am I right, Jumara Alam? Okay, I had my first heartbreak also very early in life. I had my first heartbreak, not five years old, when I was in class fifth. And what did I fall in love with the first time? I fell in love with the army uniform. I fell in love with the stage. And when I had my first heartbreak in class fifth, it wasn't that I had proposed to a girl and she rejected and she said no. It wasn't that. It was something else actually. I had appeared for the entrance test of the prestigious Dune School. There my parents had registered me when I was three years old. And my mother burned the midnight oil with me. She would teach me. She would sit through the night. She would sit up and make me learn all the countries, capitals, their president, prime ministers, their currency, all, all a lot of things, history, geography, so that I cracked the entrance test. Sometimes she would stay up the whole night with me. She would herself have tea or coffee and give me milk, which many a times I would just throw it in the sink. Now, when I appeared for the entrance test of Doom School, I was so well prepared because obviously, my mother had burned the midnight oil. She had sat through the night and she had made me prepare. So I was very sure. I was very confident. I was overconfident rather that I will crack the test. So when I sat for the entrance test, I finished the paper in record breaking off half the time. I didn't even take half time to actually write down the answer straight away. And I submitted my answer. Yeah. So the invigilator said, no, 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 no. It's too early. You sit down and revise through your paper. I said, sir, ma'am, please, I'm done. let me go, let me go, please. And finally, he said, okay, you can go now. I went out very happily dancing. Yes, I've cracked the exam and I've definitely got through. But do you know what happened? There's some people in the waiting room, just let them in. Yes, just let them in immediately because it distracts them. They come, come on screen. So I went on outside very happily that I've cracked the entrance test. And do you know what I discovered when I went out? And why I finished the exam in half the time. Just admit these people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I discovered that that same answer sheet. I forgot the same question paper rather. I forgot to see what was written behind it. I turned the question paper and I realized I have attempted only half the paper. 50% of the paper. So obviously what would happen now? Obviously I would fail. And when the result came. I was keeping my fingers crossed that at least since I have attempted 50%, I was hoping against hope that I would get full 50 on 50 for that at least. And somewhere I would pass. Now, when the result came, my name was not there. Now, what do I do? I had two options before me. One was just to catch my head and cry. And the other option was don't cry over what has happened. 
look forward. So obviously now I did not make it to Dunsku. But as Rumi's philosophy says, never grieve anything that you may lose. It comes back to you in a different form. So I didn't get to Dune school. So what? I went to another equally good school. Rather, I would say a better school. Lawrence School Love Dale in Uti, I would say. I did my schooling from there, thereafter. Fifth, sixth, in seventh, I went to the school. So in seventh, I used to stammer as a child. So now, in class seventh, I was this child who would stammer, stutter, lisp, get stuck while speaking, always unsure of himself, always living in self-doubt, always asking himself, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Why don't I have any friends? Why is it that nobody wants to come near me? Am I so bad? What is the problem with me? Where do I lack? What is missing in me? And the more I would think, the more I would feel sad and depressed. And I was being teased and bullied by my classmates, by my peers, by everyone, by my seniors. My juniors would not respect me. I would feel very bad about it. So one day I decided to take part in an elocution competition. And I went for an elocution competition and I went up on stage. And do you know what happened on stage? Kim, Kim Ron, Ron Okana, do you know what happened on stage? Binoy, come close, all of you. Come close, I'll just play the secret. Come here, all of you. Come closer. Look at that, even you come closer. Come, come. I went up on stage and this girl, I just, I was just going to become a teenager, right? I was 12 years old. I was going to become 13. So this girl who I had a crush on in school, she was sitting there in the front row. The moment I saw her, I forgot my lines. I forgot my entire lines. What I had to speak, what I had to say, what I had to do. I felt very ashamed of myself. I felt very embarrassed. I, hi Nila, thank you Nila. And I felt, oh God, what do I do now? I felt this earth should come apart and I should just fall into this earth. I was so ashamed of myself. That day, I was in a boarding school, you know, away from my family, away from my parents, away from my brothers, sisters, away from my pets. So that boarding school had become my home. So that night in the hill station, in the hills, it was cold. I was stuck into my quilt and as I was sleeping, all the boys were laughing at me. I could hear them in the dormitory making fun. Oh, this Muhammad Ali Shah, <laughs> he went up on stage and he forgot his lines. What a fool. <laughs> he forgot his lines. <laughs> I felt terrible. I felt very bad. I, like on stage, I had frozen. I had almost frozen. I had almost frozen on stage. So I did not know what to do. So I felt that now what do I do? The earth should shatter and I should freeze like this bad network. No, when you freeze in bad network, there's a fake pause, by the way. The network has not got spoiled. I'm faking it. I'm just fooling you. Or I'm just trying to trick you. I'm trying to amuse you by a fake pause. And many times you would feel the network is bad. So I froze there like that. But that night I felt so bad. It hurt me over here in my heart. I swore to myself that such a mistake will not happen again. I am not going to allow such a mistake. I will work so hard. I will prepare myself. I will be well equipped that next time when I go on stage, I should come back with a prize. So I got out of my bed. I was in a boarding school. So on top of the dormitories, where we would sleep. And below was the classroom. I went to my classroom, I opened my desk, I took the English reader and I sat before a mirror. I put a pen in my mouth and I st started reading my chapters aloud. Now it became 11 at night, 12 at night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. It was going to strike 5 a.m. and 5.30 we had a morning run, physical training. I didn't have any time to sleep. So I said, I must take a short sleep nap at least. So I went and lay down for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I got up, went for my morning run. And now the first chapter, first class for the first period was of the English class. So we had an English teacher by the name of Lokendra. Not our Lokendra, but a different Lokendra, Lokendra Kumar. Lokendra Kumar, sir, well, you would teach us English. And Lokendra, sir, was very strict. So Lokendra sir asked us, who will read today? This boy who was shy, timid, shy, introverted, 
unsure of himself, underconfident, who couldn't speak a word, who would stammer, stutter, lisp, raised his hand, first in class, very high, very enthusiastically. Yes, 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 I will read, I will read. I will. So Lukinder sir was very surprised to see this boy raising his hand. So Lukinder sir said, okay, Muhammad Ali Shah, you read. So I started reading and I read this chapter from this play from William Shakespeare's play from Shallock's speech from Merchant of Venice, where Shallock says, He had hindered me and disgraced me half a million, laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, fought my bar- scorned my bargains, thought in my bargains, scorned my. And what's the reason? I'm a Jew, hath not a Jew eyes, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hurt by the same weapon. If you tickle us, do not laugh. If you prick us, do not bleed. And if you harm us, do not revenge. So will you? And I went on. Everybody was very surprised. They all started clapping. They all clapped. That this boy who couldn't speak is speaking so fluently now. And a week later, there was another elocution competition in school. I dared to take part in Everyone made fun of him. Everyone. Oh, this boy. <laughs> this boy had just forgotten his lines on stage sometime back. <laughs> he made a big fool of himself. <laughs> he will participate. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so I went up on stage and I had learned Ibrahim Lincoln's letter to his son's teacher. I recited that. And that's a beautiful letter. He writes, his son was starting school. So he wrote, my son starts school today. It is all going to be strange and new to him for a while. And I wish you would treat him gently. It's an adventure that might take him across continents. All adventures that probably include wars, tragedy and sorrow. So dear teacher, will you please take him by his hand? And teach him things he will have to know. Teaching him, but teach him that for every enemy, there is a friend. He will have to know that all men are not just. All men are not true, but teach him also. That for every scoundrel, there is a hero. For every crooked politician, there is a dedicated leader. Teach him that 10 cents earned is of far more value than a dollar found. In school, teacher, it is far more honorable to fail than to cheat. Try to give my son the strength not to follow the crowd when everyone else is doing it. Teach him to listen to everyone, but also to filter all that he hears on the screen of truth and take only the good that may come through. Teach him the wonder of book, but also give him quiet time to ponder about the extreme mysteries of birds in the sky, bees in the sun, and flowers on a green hill. Teach him to have faith in his own ideas, even if everyone tells him they're wrong. Try to give my son the strength not to follow the crowd when everyone else is doing it. Teach him to listen to everyone, but also to filter all that he hears on a screen of truth and take only the good that may come through. Teach him to have the courage to be impatient. Let him have the patience to be brave because only then he will always have sublime faith in himself, sublime faith in in mankind, sublime faith in God. This is a tall order, teacher, but see what best you can do. He is such a nice little boy and he is my son. So this was the letter which Abraham Lincoln wrote. So I said this in my elocution competition. And when the results came, I was, I knew I'd done well. Everyone clapped. They gave me a standing ovation. They all got up. And when they gave me a standing ovation, I felt very happy. And now the results were going to be announced. And I was expect. see what happens in school generally. Generally, the first prize is normally reserved because of face value, impression, or whatever you may call it, on the school champion who has had a tradition and who has been winning all the time, right? The second prize is reserved normally for a senior who again done, done well. I thought I may stand a chance of winning the third prize at least. So now when the result was being announced and there was one ma'am by the name of Vandana ma'am. Not our Vandana, different Vandana. Vandana Kumari. So Vandana Kumari ma'am was announcing the results. And when Vandana Kumari ma'am announced the results, true story, I was a little boy that time. I got all ready, all set. And I was about to get up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, have the results with me. And Vandana ma'am says, the third prize Close to wow, and I almost got up from my seat almost. And the moment she said the third prize goes to Anil Singh, not uh, Anil Kumar over here, but a different Anil Singh. 
I was very disappointed. I thought I would win the third prize at least, but my name did not feature in the third prize as well. Now what would happen? Very disappointed. I said, doesn't matter. Maybe I might get the second prize. So Vandana Man announced, and the second prize goes to. I was all set. Ah, ah. <laughs> this is my prize for sure. And the second prize goes to Shah M Shah. I thought it's my name, M Shah Muhammad Ali Shah, right? But it was Maksud Maksud Shah. Got the second prize. Not our Maksud Ahmed Sahib, but Maksud Shah. So there's a different name there. So I was like, oh God, I haven't even won the second prize. I was very upset and disheartened. I was thinking, oh God, it doesn't matter. It happens part of life. Winning and losing is part of life. I will go again on the stage some other time, maybe next year. And next year, I will at least win the second prize at least. I almost had cry like that. Okay. And then the person who was sitting next to me, Joey, and Jomar, not Jomar Alam, a different Jomar also was there. Jomar was sitting beside of me and Joey was sitting beside of me. Right. So Jomar gave me a tap like this. What? Even Joey gave me a tap from the elbow like this. What? Ali, what? What? Your name is being called on stage. My name is being called on stage. And there was Vandana ma'am announcing... And the first prize goes to, announced, the first prize goes to Muhammad Ali Shah. And everyone clapped and stood up for this boy who would stammer, stutter, list, who was always very underconfident, who always lived in a self-doubt, constantly asking himself, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Why don't I fit in? Why don't I have any friends? Why do I keep failing in all the subjects? Why am I not good in studies? Why don't I feel like studying? What is the matter? What is the problem with me? That day and today, I swore to myself that day, I will work so hard. I will prepare myself. I will keep on working on my craft. That boy today, who couldn't speak in his childhood, holds a world record. His name is officially formally listed in the World Book of Records for having been invited to speak on TEDx. TEDx is the largest stage in the world in a way. To speak on TEDx the maximum number of times, not just in my country, but in the world over, which has been totally unprecedented. It has never happened in the history of TEDx ever. So if I could cope up with that failure and rise up to being a world record holder and learn tongue twisters like I'll recite some tongue twisters also for you, which helped me to overcome my stammering problem and my speech impediment. That any one of you can do anything and you can overcome any hurdle, any challenge in your life. Like Betty Butter bought a bit of butter, but the butter was bitter. So Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter to make the bitter butter better. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled pepper, a pack of pickled pepper, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled pepper, where's the pack of pickled pepper? Peter Piper picked seashells, seashells on the seashore. But the seashells are seashells on the seashore are not seashells at all. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck, a woodchuck wood. So I learned these so many tongue twisters, many of them. These are just a few of them, very few. I learned these and then I realized my speech would get better. And where I had forgotten my line on stage, I tried learning a very, very complicating monologue, a prose, which is the complicating secret is, come closer. It's a little complicating and a secret. Come closer, all of you. All this many years. The, I'm talking to you, the one who's put this camera off and who's smiling. At least put your camera off. Ah, I caught you. Your camera was on. Yes, I'm talking to you only. Shall I spell out your name? Your camera was on, by the way, huh? And we saw you. <laughs> yes, okay, look in there. We saw that this person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thinking the camera's off, but the camera was on. <laughs> yes, you only. Smiling now. Nice, sweet. Okay. So the secret is, I am. I am my own grandpa. Hmm? Oh, I am my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know, but really so, I am my own grandpa. Let me explain to you how. Oh, many, many years ago, when I was 23, 
I was married to a widow who was as pretty as could be. Now this widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair so red that my father fell in love with her and soon the two were wed. Well, that is a story. This boy who couldn't speak today holds a world record of having been invited to speak on TEDx the highest number of times in the world. And ha, huh, I'm my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know, but really so. I'm my own grandpa. Let me explain to you how. Oh, many, many years ago when I was 23, I was married to a widow who was as pretty as could be. Now, this widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair so red that my father fell in love with her and soon the two were wed. Now, this made my dad my son-in-law and changed my very life. Oh, my daughter now became my mother since she became my father's wife. Now, to complicate the matter, though it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. Now, this little baby of mine then became a brother-in-law to dad and so became my uncle, for it made me very sad. For if this little baby of mine was my uncle, then that made me the brother of the widow's grown-up daughter, who was called by now was my stepmother. My father's wife then had a son who kept them on the run, and he became my grandchild, for he was my stepdaughter's son. My wife is now my stepmother's mother, and it makes me blue. Because although she is my wife, she is my grandmother too. Now, if my wife is my grandmother, then obviously I'm a grandchild, and every time I think of this, by God, it nearly drives me wild. For now, I've become the strangest case you ever saw. As a husband of my own grandma, I am my own grandpa. It sounds funny and complicated, I know, but really so. Thank you. So I learned such a line. A boy who forgot his lines, who couldn't remember his lines, could now remember the most difficult tongue twisters, the most difficult monologues. But now, after that elocution competition, class 7th, he did not do well in academics. That's me. In class 8th, I didn't do well in academics again. But I passed. I scraped through. Now in class 9th, what happened? I failed a year. I failed in class 9th. I had to repeat my class 9th. I had to do it again. I saw my juniors becoming my batchmates. My batchmates become my seniors. And my seniors become my super seniors. Difficult, no? And I'm away from home, away from my family, away from my parents. I would feel homesick. I would miss them. But I said, okay, I failed in class 9th. Let me, if I'm redoing my class, let me now do it in a way that I've studied the portion. I know the... I'll be redoing it. So now let me top it. It's like doing an a tuition for one year, starting the same syllabus for the last year. So I have an advantage there. Let me see the good point, the advantage in that. Now the second year, when I repeated ninth, I did well. But in class 10th, I got a supplementary exam, that which means I got a re-exam in math. After my class 12th, I wanted to join the army, but I failed in the National Defense Academy entrance test. In graduation in my college, I failed in English. And I guess how much I scored in English. I got one out of 100 in English. How much? Just one out of 100 in English. So it was 001 slash 100. So I was told that cannot be possible. It must have been 100 out of 100. Give your paper for rechecking, for re-evaluation, for re-examination. Re-examining. So they re-examined the paper, they rechecked it. And they said that you have no change. You have actually scored one out of 100 in English only. I was very disappointed. Anyway, when I reappeared for this test, I got distinction. After my graduation, I tried for the National School of Drama to learn theater, to learn drama, to learn acting. I failed in the entrance test. I could not get through. I waited for a year. I tried again the next year. Again, I failed. Then I tried for mass communication of Jamia Millia Islami of a university in Delhi. Again, I failed in that. Then I tried for the UPSC, the Union Public Service Examination, which is considered to be one of the toughest exams in the country. For the army, I sat for that, the Officers Training Academy, and I got through that. And when I got through, I went for my training. I there is a test called the Drill Square Test, DSD test. In my first attempt, I failed. Second attempt, I failed. Third attempt, I failed. Then there was a midterm break. All the credits went home to their families to refresh, rejuvenate. I didn't get permission. I had to stay back in academy. I had to practice for the test. Extra punishments, extra drills, extra duties were given to me. The academy reopened after the midterm break. All the credits came home, refreshed, rejuvenated, very happy. And hugging each other, hey, dude, how are you? Long time. I was still in the academy. I did not have permission to go home. So I met everyone there. Hello, how are you? Now, since I had prepared for this test in my holidays, came the fourth attempt. Fourth attempt, since I had prepared now, what will happen? I was well prepared, right? So now in the fourth attempt, fail. Fifth attempt, fail. Sixth and the last attempt. 
I once again failed. Now a special test was conducted for by for me to make me pass a grace attempt, a mercy attempt, a dhaka attempt to right John to John. I know you play football. I know you are crazy about the World Cup and you watch football. So it was very crazy about football. Yes, John, I'm talking to you. John, Mark, and Fato. All right. So now, in the Greece attack, also I feel. So I was presented before the commandant of the academy, and the commandant is like the principal, like the head of the academy. Spoke to me, son. I have your report card before me. I see you're doing very well. But what happened, son? Why are you failing repeatedly and consistently? What is the matter with you? What is the problem? I would like to know. I told him, sir. When I came for training for army in the academy, my father, who is himself a general in the army, told me, "Son, do well in academy during your training. Make us proud, but most importantly, always remember to keep your performance consistent." And my advice is consistent. I had been keeping my performance consistent. I was only listening to the advice by failing repeatedly. Am I right, Maksud Sab? Maksud Ahmed Sab? I'm right, right over here. So Kamalan had a good laugh. He said, "Hello, my chap, yeah, what a sense of humor. Come on, make him pass. Give him push-ups to do. Give him extra punishment, extra duties, extra drills. But I want this chap to be passed. Ultimately, I was passed. But do you know what happened, my dear friends? On 26 January, which is the Republic Day for India, in the year 2008. I led the Assam Rifles marching contingent on Rajpath at the Republic Day parade with two fractured legs both my legs had stress fractures but I did that the moral of the story is never give up never quit no matter how many times you fall no matter how many times you fail don't quit when the tide is lowest for it's just about to turn don't quit over doubts and questions for there's something you may learn don't quit when the tide is lowest for it's just about to turn don't quit when you run the furthest for the race is almost won don't quit when the hill is steepest or your goal is almost nigh don't quit for you're not a failure unless and until you fail to try so try keep trying try you fail once fail better fail again doesn't matter but you try and you try 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 until you succeed how many times will you keep failing how many times ultimately you will succeed and you will succeed with flying color that is my guarantee i'm telling you with personal experience see when the pandemic came in when the pandemic came in and all the shops were closing down all the businesses were closing down all the restaurants coffee shops theaters were closing down that time i was also without work but i had to survive so an idea came into my mind as they say an idea can change your life right nova right john maksud sahab you are with me okay you can show reactions there you can write in the comment box in the chat box if you are if you are with me or not and then i realized that i have given so many tedx talk which are there on youtube in fact you can subscribe to my youtube channel it's on youtube by my name this is my name written over here it's there on youtube by my name major mohammad ali shah you can subscribe to it there are a lot of talks over there you can press the like button or dislike button if you don't like any talk you are welcome to do it i don't mind you can comment but if you comment i will really appreciate and i will reply to every comment share it tell your friends to subscribe but today the same boy who failed many times who couldn't speak speaks on every single television channel almost every day on different different topics so in the pandemic i started an online public speaking academy on zoom and it picked up very well today i train people in effective communication and how to speak better how to communicate better online right so this keeps happening so what did i do i converted an adversity into an opportunity i saw an opportunity out of that and i did well so if i could do it any one of you can do it see when things go wrong as they sometimes will when the road you are trudging seems all uphill when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but have to sigh when cares pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit see life is queer with twists and turns and all of us sometimes learn and many a person turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out so don't quit though the pace seems slow you may win with another blow often a struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup 
And he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint in the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It might be near, but when it seems afar, so stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You must not quit because if you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you cannot, there's almost a kinch you want. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. For out in the world we find success begins with a person's will. It is all in the state of mind. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster men. But sooner or later, the person who wins is the one who thinks he can. So if you feel you can do it, you will do it. And when I said if, I'll conclude by reciting my favorite poem by Rudyard Kipling called If. I hope many of us take some lesson from this. And many of us would have heard this poem as well. Very famous poem. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself and all men doubt you, but make allowance for the doubting too. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think but not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. Or bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or wash the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with one or tools. If you can make one heap of all your winning and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and snoo to serve your turn long after they're gone. And so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose a common touch. If neither friends nor in the foes nor loving friends can hurt you. If all men count with you but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distant run. <laughs> yours is the earth and everything that's in it and which is more. You'll be a man, my son. Right? So I'll share the link of my YouTube channel. You ask the link. I'll share it over here. And if somebody else also finds the link, please share it on this channel. And yes, this is a link to my channel. And this is about the parade. So keep your morale up. Always think good. Gentlemen, boys and girls, my friends, remember one thing. We are what we think we are. We can be who we want to be. We are nothing but a mere reflection of our thoughts. We are what we think we are. There's a photograph of a cat looking into a mirror. Now, what does this cat see? The cat sees a lion larger than life. So you have to feel yourself. You have to behave that way in order to get anywhere in life. So never give up. Don't let failure bog you down. Don't let anyone ever to tell you, let that person tell you that you cannot do something. If someone has told you that, please prove them wrong. Show them. If I could leave the parade with two fractured legs, the same test which I failed repeatedly in my training, I wasn't allowed to go home. Mental torture as well. But I had two fractured legs and I did that parade. You can do anything in life and you can cope with failure with this. I end my talk. Thank you very much. I hope you have subscribed and commented on my YouTube channel. You take care. Cheers. Thank you so much, sir. Really informative and incredible session. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, our first question uh, is from YouTube channel. If you invest a lot of time in something and that something resulted in failure, how will you cop up or cover the time you spent to that something? You know, any time invested in anything never goes for a waste. Failure, fail, F A I L itself means first attempt in learning. So you always end up learning it. And the time you've invested is always good. When you hear no as an answer, thank you, Neeraj Bala, Khayal, Alex Telbo, thank you. When you hear no as an answer, it means next opportunity. When you hear end as an answer, it means an endeavor or an effort never dies. So if you have invested a year in one exam, like the way I did, and end up failing in that, like the way I did, try again. And that 
effort that you put in never goes for a waste. See, literacy is different and education is different. Literacy is mere getting a degree from school. You've done your 12th, you've done your graduation, you've done your master's, you've done your diploma. And education is something that you learn through your, thank you, Jomar, Alim, through your own experience, by reading, by meeting people, by interacting with people, by experiencing things, by experiencing failure in life. So it's very important to taste success, no doubt, and also taste failure. Only if you have tasted failure also in life, you would have experienced a lot of things in life. So it's very important to take it positively. Uh, thank you so much sir, for your insight. Uh, so we are having another question from Wilbert. So Wilbert says, I would like to quit my job because there is no more career growth for me in the company. Though my job is here is stable. I am afraid to leave my job because what if I fail and no company to accept me? And no company to accept me. Okay, very good question. Ask me. I have been in your shoes. I have done this twice, not once, twice. I wasn't happy with my regular 9 to 5 job. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to work for my... Thanks, Athira. It's a chocolate vanilla. Teach you, dog. I wanted to work with myself, for myself. So now, what did I do? Just, I resigned from my job. If you want to quit your job, do it. It is now or never. You will spend the rest of your life thinking and dreaming about it. It will not happen. Hi, Teresa Cruz. How are you? Teresa Cruz, are you by any chance related to Tom Cruise? Okay, anyway. So, it's now or never. Do it. Don't think. Don't procrastinate. Oh, tomorrow, next week, after 10 days, next month, when I get my next salary, when I get a raise, when I get a promotion, you will end up falling in the job corporate trap. You will never do it. And let me tell you, if you jump in the sea, you will learn to swim. What will happen? What will happen at the worst? Either you sink or you swim. But I don't know anybody who has sank. They've all swam only. And you will not swim. Life begins at the end of the comfort zone. Just when the caterpillar thought it is the end of the world, it transformed into a beautiful butterfly. Come to the edge. No, we will fall. Come to the edge. No, we will fall. They came to the edge and they flew. So don't be scared about whatever you want to do in life. Do it. It's now or never. And also, Khalil Gibran, a very famous poet, wrote a poem on four lines on fear. He wrote, it is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled across the peaks of the mountains, the long winding roads crossing forests and villages. And in front of it, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter seems nothing more but to disappear forever. But there's no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river now has to take the risk of entering the ocean. It is now that fear will disappear and the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean. It is about becoming the ocean. Right? Yes, Pandora? Yeah, uh, thank you so much sir, for your insight. Sir, uh, there is one more question. Uh, how do we really overcome the fear of failure? You know, what is the worst thing that can happen to us? The fear of failure. When you overcome the fear of failure, that's the time you'll emerge victorious. Right? Kim Ron, Oxra, Mary Rose, Keza. So when you are scared, you'll keep getting scared. Don't be scared. Move forward. And when you are totally fearless, that's the time you will begin to experience life. So that is how. Don't be scared. Just catch the bull by its horns. Look at, at fear in its eyes. The failure in its eyes. And you'll go ahead. Thank you, Alexa Clittle Alcantara. Thank you so Thank much, sir, so for much making this session a very big success. The webinar was really amazing, and I would like to propose like like the words of thanks to you for attending today's webinar. Those are some wise words I would like to propose the best possible way. I hope all the participants will not be with this webinar. I would really like to thank you for giving us your valuable time, and I am also delighted to be part of this session. A hard beginning makes a good end. All good things eventually good things will be. I consider everyone as fortunate that they become a part of today's webinar, which was full of knowledge, which makes it difficult to say goodbye.